Ah, Baldur's Gate, one of the greatest games of all time. I cannot even state this enough how good it is. It is also hilariously broken, but like I mentioned last time, it does sit at that summit of Mount Everest when it comes to amazing games and their topography. Regardless, we're going to go dive right in because this game, whilst it's uh, really good, also runs on the Infinity Engine. The Infinity Engine is... Um, Rather notorious. Uh, let, let's put it that way. Let's uh, let's dive right in, shall we? Let's make a character. Let's make a new game, and uh, it's gonna be great. We're gonna have a good time, and of course, we are going to be a male of the realm. And uh, yeah, it's uh, we gotta make a we might make a human. This this looks like human to you? Yeah, this this definitely looks like a human to me. So we're gonna go do that, and uh, they are gonna be human, of course. Class. We're gonna be a mage. Why are we gonna be a mage? Well, uh, it appears that mages can do all sorts of hilarious things that are a little bit broken. And we are going to be a transmutator. Because then we can change physical reality. What are the lights? So, let's do that. Uh, alignment, neutral, uh, true neutral abilities. So, first of all, we're gonna go and nuke our strength into the ground, and we're gonna nuke our charisma into the ground. They're useless skills, they're not useful to us at all. Instead, we're gonna crank up intelligence and wisdom all the way to the max, and then uh, we'll just add constitution. Uh, yeah, these two, yeah, dexterity and constitution, super high. Basically, we have a ultra weak mage that is terrible at charisma, basically. We're talking Napoleon Dynamite's level of charisma right here. And uh, they, they can basically only carry a stick. But they're super dexterous. They can drink like a trooper. They're super intelligent. And their wisdom, wow, is 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 insane. So that's good. So let's do that. Skills, uh, we want to have the dagger skill. And we want to have the a quarter staff skill in this one. And we need to add a couple of magics to our character. Now, of course, magic missile. Who can, uh, who can, who could never do magic missile? Do identify. Find familiar, that's going to be important later. Uh, a bunch of other stuff. Shield is good. Uh, reflected image is good. Infravision, no, we don't need that, I think. Uh, and eh, let's do some other things. It might be like a uh, chromatic orb and charm person. Now, obviously, we want to have fireball. Come on, this is D&D. We always need to have fireball. We need to have lightning bolt. Ironically enough, lightning bolt is important here. Also, monster summoning. Ironically, very important. Haste, also extremely good. And uh, let's add clairvoyance because it allows us to see the entire region that we are playing in, which is rather excellent. And we'll add slow on top of that just to balance things out. Then we get to our fourth level. And our fourth level, we are going to need Polymorph Self. Extremely important for this particular thing. Monster Summoning 2. Uh, spider Spawning, which is also extremely good. And we are going to just add some more defensive stuff on top of that, like Stone Skin, uh, Spirit Armor, and Improved Invisibility. Improved Invisibility, exceptionally good for this particular playthrough. Alright, and uh, now we need to have a cool name for our character. Excellent. So, we've uh, created a super awesome character with low charisma, low strength, but everything else is through the roof. Charisma is a dumb stat because it's a dumb stat. Who, like, why would we ever use charisma, right? So, let's accept this and let's dive right in. Ah, boy. And immediately we dive into a cutscene. Yeah, well... Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. Oh look, it is the antagonist of the game. It's John Irenicus. Now the thing with John Irenicus is, skip to the end. All right, so, so this room's a little bit special. We're gonna go and place our main okay. character all the way over by uh, this wall, yep. and we are going to place Jesus. our other characters in various positions cause. throughout I, 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 the room. In the meantime, uh, we're going to get Imowen to cast Summon yeah, Monster, and our main character is also going to cast Summon Monster. This obviously will spawn a bunch of monsters in the room. One of the monsters is going to sit right on top of our protagonist. We're going to do Summon Monster, right monster one more time, just to make sure we get the room nicely filled up. And we can probably do it one more time, just in case for safety. And there we go. So we got a bunch of extra monsters. That's good. We got a couple of spiders. That's good. Alright, so we're going to go and do the following. We're going to cast Polymorph Self on ourselves. Well, our self allows us to turn ourselves into any creature that we want, so we're going to go and turn ourselves into a slime. Uh, as we turn ourselves into a slime, 
we spawn into the room next door. Now, the room next door is rather important. We're going to immediately turn ourselves back into a human. As, uh, it's kind of important that we do. Uh, this room is completely filled with traps, so we're going to need to be really careful. We need to just wait for the uh, polymorph self to uh, wrap up here. Good, and we are going to do mirror image. There we go, mirror image is here. We're going to do a little bit of blur as well. Yeah, man. Give me blur. And there's blur, good. So now we're just going to casually walk up to this chest. It is trapped, but the traps will be eaten by the mirror image. We're going to grab the key, then we're going to click on Minsk. And we are just going to go towards the next level. That's how you do that one. Oh, how how great. We just skipped the entire first oh, level of the basement. And look, it's madness. Yoshimo. Yoshimo is going to join us. Yoshimo is incredibly good place. for Yoshimo the rest of assistance. the campaign. All right, so we, uh, we're out of the we're out of the dungeon now. And uh, yeah, we're, we're in Athkatla, the capital of Arm, which is one of the places in the worlds of the Sword Coast, Dungeon Dragons and all that stuff. But we have a problem. We don't have a lot of money. Uh, we only have to got 1,200 gold, which is not a lot. So we're going to need to do something about that something immediately. If my character... Oh, wait, we're encumbered because we're so weak. <laughs> all right, so we're going to need to move a couple of these items away do that, uh, that we picked up on the way out of the dungeon uh having a, a strength of three is not all that great so we're gonna need to make sure that we are uh, unencumbered for this one so uh let's make sure that all of that stuff can we move now yes we can all right cool so we're gonna go and move over towards this door because this door is a house in that house we will find a item that we are going to need for our next trick so we're just gonna go open the door there we go hello welcome that's that's the good stuff right there and now we're in the house in this bag there is a gem there we go it's a gem it's a fire agate gem it's it's beautiful and uh, that's that's fine we're just gonna grab one potion and uh, we're gonna go and drink this potion just to do it again just in case Need to make sure that, that that it works properly and there we go all of a sudden because <laughs> because the game has an integer value of 16 it means that it um it takes any item and if you manage to exploit it in a proper way it will uh, basically take that item and roll the chart back to the top of the chart which in this particular case is an integer of uh, two times the power of uh, to the power of 16 which is uh, 65,535 and that basically works because we use the drink potion but we actually don't drink the potion until we get out of this menu so if you drink the potion so for instance if I just grab one of these here gems if we drink the potion split it over and then move it out here the action is actually taken on this screen this means that the potion will actually not be used until the next turn. And uh, basically, because we replaced the potion with the gem, it means the gem is being used. But the gem is not a usable item, therefore it goes to zero. But you can't have zero gems if the gem's still there. Therefore, it will automatically roll over to the next logical number. Like I said, at the top of the table, which is, in this particular case, the ridiculous... 565,000 uh, gems. Regardless, uh, we have all we need. We're going to get the hell out of here. And uh, we're going to okay. go and uh, go to the Adventurer's Mark. Because uh, the Adventurer's Mark is good. Because uh, now with all these gems, we can do a couple of really cool things. Sure thing. Let's walk over here to our good friend. Let's, uh, let's have a quick chat with you. Hey there, buddy. How are you doing there, uh, Rebalt? Rebalt is important. Uh, we're going to go and buy some stuff off of him. Actually, we're going to sell all of our fire gems. Because we can get about 200,000 gold for that. There you go. We now have 200,000 gold. So immediately we're going to buy the Girdle of, G of Hill Giant Strength. Uh, the Girdle of Hill, Hill Giant Strength will allow us to, um, well, get over our crippling strength issue of 3. Because uh, we can just put this on and all of a sudden we now have a strength of 19. Whilst all the other ones are still completely maxed out. Charisma is still at 3. Uh, that's a bit of a problem. But maybe, maybe we have something for that as well. So one of the shops in this uh, place, uh, they sell what's called the Robe of Vecna. Which is going to increase our casting speed by 4. Basically it allows us to instantly cast any speed. Spell we want, which makes us incredibly overpowered. Money well spent. Good, let's head the hell out of here and uh, go towards the next place that we need to go to. 
All right, now that we're all decked out, we need to go to the next location. Hello there, guard. Uh, yes, I would like to go into this tent. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go into this tent. There's 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 a, an item in here that we need, and we're gonna go and uh, go and collect that one. It is rather good. Uh, it, sadly, it is being uh, you know. Uh, uh, kind of protected by a bunch of gins, but uh, we can we can deal with all that stuff. That's not an issue. Okay, so we're just gonna go and get past this one. We just uh, we just uh, correctly guess the riddle, and we'll just go straight. You must in. Who are you? Oh, whoever you are, you must flee this place at once. He's he's killed everyone else who has come into this place. Almost. Oh, please run. Okay, so we've uh, we've very quickly uh, finished off, and we need to pick up a certain item over here, specifically uh, this ring. Ooh, another gem that we can uh, copy paste. Uh, we're also looking for a very particular type of spell called Synclarium, or Simul Sankra, or Simul Sankra. I, I, simulacra. That's the one. Simulacra. That's the one we need. Anyway, uh, we this this here this here ring, the ring of human influence, is going to increase our charisma, which by the way is currently sitting at three to eighteen. Ta da! Oh my lord, we have a super powerful character right now with almost all stats, pretty much to godlike levels. What of the light? Uh, how much money do we have right now? A uh, hundred and fifty-eight thousand coins. All right, so we're done over here. That's fine. We're just we're just gonna go over here. Oh, by the way, we've picked up another character on the way out, so I guess that's okay. So we're just gonna go to the slums, and uh, we will instantly be received by the following character. Hello there, buddy. It's Galerian, Galian Bale. Uh, yeah, so uh, he basically says, uh, hey, uh, pay me 10 grand and I will take you to the people that will help you out to find Imowin. And uh, normally you would need to, uh, you know, get a bunch of missions going, etc. Etc. So, you know, you could go all over the world if they get gold. Thankfully, we uh, duped all of our money, which means that uh, we can just, uh, you know, pay them off immediately. Anyway, we just completely skipped the entire first part of the game, um, which is probably about, what, like, 20 hours of game time or something like that? Yeah, uh, that's that's the good stuff. Normally, we would, we would beeline straight to the docks in order to get the stuff that we need from uh, Aaron Linvale. However, instead, we're going to go towards the gate districts because we need to go to a certain inn. That inn has some items inside of it, and uh, that's something that we need. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, there's some good items, to say the least. Uh, it's a certain type of rod, and, uh, this is the, uh, Crooked Crane. We need to go into the Crooked Crane, and, uh, say hi to the people inside of it. Now, we're just gonna stand over here, and look for something in the, well, look at that, there's a door over here. Let's see if we can, uh, unlock the door. I think we should be able to unlock the door. Actually, maybe we can just use the knock spell on... Um, this one. Oh, there it is. The door is now open. What of the light. Let's level up and see what's inside. So in this room, there is a lich. Now, lich obviously is one of the more dangerous enemies in the game. But thankfully, with all the kit that we bought with our duped money, we should be able to just uh, easily get him. But obviously, we want to interrupt his ability to do anything. Thankfully, he's in conversation mode due to the well, the blue little circle that's around him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a chat with him. So and now he is already in conversation mode. I'm going to set my character to a different action because now the lich will be stuck for a couple turns in the conversation loop, which means that he won't be able to do anything. So whilst we're doing something else, uh, we're just going to spawn a couple of... Um, I was going to spawn a monster around him. I think that'd be good. Uh, Minsk can use his hammer on him. Uh, we'll just use Shishimo here with his combat abilities. And tell you what, uh, we're going to go and just 
Just casually do some damage to him. Nothing special. Ah, well, it seems like he's activated after we've done a, a reasonable amount of damage. So I'm just going to end this dialogue and he will immediately do all of his combos. Basically all his protective mantles and stuff like that. So we won't be able to do any damage to him for a little bit. So uh, what we'll do is we'll just uh, wait for him to start doing his most of his abilities. Uh, we lost two of our characters. Not the end of the world. We'll just leave the room. And, um, you know, let's just, uh, tell you what. We'll just go to bed. I think I think that will be a good solution here. We'll just go to bed. We'll we'll we'll, we'll sleep we'll sleep on it for a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just, we'll just casually do some sleep. There we go. So the lich is still in the other room, and um, uh, his protective warts should be worn off by now, which they are. Look at that. It's it's all worn off. Mm -hmm. That's delightful. So we'll just continue attacking him. We lured the lich back into the other room, which is good because uh, we managed to pick up a little, uh, little bit of a long sword, which is very, very good versus the undead. So why do we want to kill this lich? Well, the lich has a certain rod, a rod that will do damage to whatever and uh, instill fear, but it also generates, well, the ability to lose your charisma 20% of the time. 20% of successful hits. And because we're bouncing back and forth between rooms, um, he's just using his spells, but we'll just move back and forth, and there's nothing he can do about it. And soon enough, he is going to run out of spells. We just need to make sure that he activates them properly. You gonna do a spell there, buddy? You gonna do a spell? There you go. All right, we'll just move into the other room. Yeah, it's just not much you can do about it. It's not much yet. Oh, no. You got another spell for me? Oh no, it looks like he's he's basically a run out. Uh, not yet. Let's move back into the other room. And uh, yeah, ding dong, the lich is dead. And we just did that by moving back and forth between rooms. Um, yeah, let's uh, pick up the rod that we came for. Let's uh, let's get us let's get us a ring of spell turning as well. But yeah, there it is. Uh, there it is. Oh, we need to identify it. Ah uh, yes, the rod of terror. One of the Broken items in the game. So now that we have the rod, we can do a couple of cool things here. Um, we're going to unequip the uh, Ring of Inf Human Influence. And as you can see, we have two units of charisma. Yep. Why? Because we were bashing good old Yoshimo over the head with our quarterstaff. And we're going to continue to be doing that. Or we're just going to go and uh, bash him over the head. Uh, yeah, we'll just continuously just, you know... Crack his skull, because apparently that's what good friends do. It's just a bunch of friends, you know, beating the crap out of each other inside of uh, what is, I guess, a hotel room or something along those lines. It is not important. Uh, it just means we just need to get our charisma lower than one. Uh, right now it's sitting at two, and uh, then we're just going to go on that. So let's, uh, let's just beat the crap out of Yoshimo, and let's hope that we can get our charisma So right now we're sitting at zero charisma, however it's being blocked by the wonderful world of the ring that we are wearing on our finger, which of course is the ring of human influence. If we take this ring off, we will die. And we're dead, which is of course an issue. Uh, instead, we're just gonna go and do something else. Uh, we're just going to, uh, you know, grab our low save file that, uh, that I've set up. And uh, you know what, we're just going to bash Yoshimo Okay. Over the head for one more time. At least until the magnificent world of the charisma modification starts to kick in. Oh, we're just waiting for it. Alright, so we've managed to have the final charisma modifier. Now obviously we're currently sitting at that 18, right? Because of the because of the ring. But normally we would only have zero at this point. Let's take the ring off. Oh my. We have 25 charisma. How does this work? Well, apparently, uh, if you um, have zero charisma and you lose one charisma, then the table gets flipped upside down, and all of a sudden, you have 25 charisma. You go from being a complete idiot to the most suave guy in the universe. Okay, next up, we're going to need to do something, again, very creative. Um, I've bought the spell, a limited wish, and uh, I am going to summon a genie. A genie from a bottle. And then immediately... 
pause the game. Let's see whether or not... There we go. So we've got Yoshimo selected. And the genie is already here. He's just not physically spawned yet. Instead of having the genie talk to our main uh, caster guy, or at least the person who casts the spell, we're just gonna have Yoshimo talk to the genie instead. Hello there, genie. Uh, I am Yoshimo. I would like to have a, uh, a wish, please. Uh, a one-time wish. Uh, I would like to have... Actually, tell you what. Uh, no, actually, I wish to be anything I desire. And, uh, yeah, now we have given Yoshimo the ability Yoshimo to shape change. What does this mean? It means that we can turn Yoshimo into a bunch of really cool things. Like Greater Werewolf, or Giant Troll, or... Iron Golem. Iron Golem is incredibly useful. However, first of all, we're gonna need to kill Yoshimo. Um, there we go. Uh, Yoshimo, it was really nice having you around, but, uh, you gotta go. Uh, we're gonna need to murder you for a second here. Uh, he's just gotta- he's gotta go. Uh, he's got a problem. We just need to wait for him to, you know, do all the dying and the stuff. So, sorry, Yoshimo, but, uh, it was- it was nice having you, but we can't have you around at the moment. So, uh, yeah, whilst we beat the crap out of Yoshimo, I'm just gonna have a nice, uh, sip of my caffeinated, uh, drink over here. Oh, it's... Yeah, that's the good stuff right there. You know, it's, uh... These long days of recording, making you know, exploits and all that stuff. It does it does take the energy out of it, but that's where the coffee comes in. Anyway, whilst Yoshimo uh, is uh, in the process of horribly dying, uh, we're just uh, going to, you know, just, uh, just, there we go. Okay, so Yoshimo is dead. We're just going to take his stuff. Uh, let's say, Eri, take his stuff. And, uh, you know, we're just going to pick all that stuff up. It's not really all that important. And we're just going to get the hell out of here. Good. So, Yoshimo's dead. And uh, we're just gonna go and move away from here uh, into a different area because we're gonna need to talk to our good friends, the Shadow Thieves. And uh, Yeshima will stay dead for a little while. There's a good reason for it. Uh, we'll go into that soon. But uh, we're, we, we need to go over towards the dock as soon as we can figure out how to get the hell out of here. There we go. There's the wheel. So we can just go over here and uh, yeah, t take it away. Apparently, we can play Baldur's Gate in 64 by 48 and play this on widescreen, baby. Let's go to the docks. So it looks like our good friend, Yoshimo, has been dead for quite a while. And that's fine. Uh, mm. We're just gonna go and uh, re resurrect him. Why wouldn't we? Uh, welcome back, Yoshimo. Good times. Good having you. Uh, you may have noticed that the uh, shapeshifting spell has worn off. There's no longer the little icon on the screen. However, we still have the ability to shapeshift. For instance, into this massive well. golem. Um, why can we do this? Well, uh, Yoshimo died and the spell wore off. However, the game notices that he's dead therefore the spell cannot wear off and the spell timer has worn off but he can still do it therefore he can now infinitely until the end of the game turn into any of these creatures which is going to be very 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 useful wow little aaron linville has put me on a boat and um Unlike uh, any sort of D&D situation, never get on the boat. Never get on the boat. Who knows what lurks in that water? Kraken? Other devious things? Lizardmen? Oh god, it's it's terrifying. It's terrifying. So yeah, it's uh, something that we need to take care of. We need to take care of uh, this guy, of course. But uh, yeah, in all honesty, I don't think this is going to be a big concern. We just need to get to the spell hold, really. So there's this nice guard up here that's uh, it's gonna be pretty useful. Hey there, guard man. How are you doing? Um, considering we have all of this insane charisma of level 25, Declare we can just have yourself. a quick chat with him and then be be like, hey, um, how about uh, how about I give you 300 gold? Oh, thank you for letting me into the spell hold. That's nice of you. V very nice. I can I can skip most of the island part here. Excellent. Oh, there's a spell hold. What a delightful place. In a sort of weird Victorian-esque way, or I don't know. It's mm. regardless. It's uh, it's the place where we're going to be spending uh, the next three and a half minutes because we're going to skip the entire segment of spell hold, which is normally quite a chunk of the entire game. So uh, what we're going to need is is uh, we need to get we need to get out of these here. Um, we need to get out of these cages and then go into the main area. Ah, uh, good old, good old Lunk opening the door for us. That's some good stuff right there. So let's get out of here. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna escape from this here prison immediately, if we can. Come on, guys. I, I need to know. There we go. Just let us, let me walk through the corridors. 
Da -da -da. Perfect. So, behind this door is a rather important place. So, we are going to have our good friend, Ushima, who uh, was, is capable of all sorts of cool stuff. For instance, in his inventory is a monster summoning wand. So, what we're going to do is we're going to drink a potion, put the ma ma wand on the potion, and uh, he's just going to use the wand. Very exciting. And uh, we're just going to place our, uh, our people in a good position here. That's good. And now I'm going to turn him into a golem because we can still do this for some reason. Oh boy, we've just glitched through the door. Let's go downstairs, shall we? Oh, this is just delightful. Uh, we've just skipped uh, an entire segment here. Uh, Yoshimo is just going to turn back into his human shape. And uh, just going to go down towards the next area down here because uh, there's all this sort of stuff that we need to do here. And uh, we're going to go towards the next door because we need to get into the Underdark. Let's uh, spread these guys out kind of nicely here. Make sure we have enough space. And Yoshimo is just going to turn himself into that there golem. And look at that. He's glitched through the door. And we can now use the portal out of here. And that was spell hold. <laughs> Ah, it's, this game is so delightfully broken. I, I do I do enjoy when this sort of thing happens. Thank you, thank you, Ironicus, for making this uh, so difficult. And the infin Infinity Engine, of course, also quite delightful. So yeah, we have basically just done a whole bunch of skips that allow us to um, destroy a whole bunch of the game. So we've, uh, we've arrived in the Underdark. And, uh, yeah, after glitching through all these portals, it's, uh, it's, it's good times. Uh, there's... Underdark is a massive part of the game, and you're gonna be stuck here for quite some time. Mm, Unless, of course, like you do a bunch of things. Like, for instance, I don't know, drink a potion, use clairvoyance in that spot, and all of a sudden, our golem thief will use clairvoyance, and we can see the entire map. Now, what do we need to do here? Well, we need to get to a cave. More specifically, we need to get to... Uh, this cave over here because in this cave there is a dragon a dragon indeed however uh, we need to do a couple of things first uh, we are going to need Armor, to uh, uh, to murder most of our team uh -huh. so Yoshimo you are no longer necessary for the moment also by the way Yoshimo is not supposed to be here he's supposed to die inside of the spell hold so what we're going to be doing is, is we're just going to kill this monster. And then we are going to haste Jahira. Jahira is going to go and run up in here to this here encampment to go get a key. And Minsk and Yoshimo are going to go down into here. In the meantime, they, they're just going to walk up towards the dark cave. If they make it, they make it. If not, then not. That's that's not really a problem. Uh, what is important, however, is that we make it. And that's that's kind of important. So we're just uh, going to go mirror image ourselves. We're going to give ourselves some invisibility. Good. And now we are invisible and we can run really fast and we are just gonna go ahead and run to this here dark cave we just make sure that we don't have any scripts running no scripts are running so we won't automatically attack anything and now my character is so nicely going to run across the map all right so jahira has successfully killed this dwarf and she has gotten the light gate gem and basically that will allow us to go wherever we need so now it's time for jahira to die uh jahira we don't need you anymore uh, so we're just gonna move her somewhere uh useless uh, let's just walk her into a room i guess and uh that's uh, that, that should be enough i would hope let's take a look can we can we find somebody to run you into here jahira you just need to have a horrible death happen to you that's all i care about because, uh, ironically, as soon as she dies, considering she has the light gem in her pocket, the light gem is a item... Actually, come to think of it, we're just going to reform the party. Uh, we're just going to jump. We're going to throw her away. 
There we go. And now she's gone. So what happens now is, is that the light gem should teleport into our pocket, which it has. And uh, yeah, now we can uh, enter the dungeon over here. So let's get in here. So now we can get into Avalon's uh, dungeon. That is the uh, the bit where the dragon... So Jahira is uh, is gone. We didn't need her anymore. We're now in this dungeon over here. So we're gonna we're gonna go send Miss Minsk down in here. Uh, we don't care about this here uh, here dragon at all. Um, we're just gonna go and skip all this stuff, and uh, we're just gonna go and uh, attack her. Okay, she is uh, she is now aggressive to us, which means that we can no longer talk to her, which means that uh, she is no longer relevant to us. But because of this, uh, the door has been opened, and Minsk is being oh my god, Minsk has just been thrown across the map. Apparently, uh, don't worry, he's 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 a tough little he's a tough guy. He's he's gonna do it anyway. He's just gonna run in there and uh, go after the dragon once again because he is a pro. But uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Minsk needs to die for various reasons. Alright, so, Minsk is dead, we can get the hell out of here, because the door to the outside has been opened. The Kuratoa dungeon is, of course, the exit to the Underdark. We're still hasted, thankfully, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to also cast Mirror Image, and that should hopefully allow us to survive this within reason. We're still carrying the corpses of our two teammates with us, by the way. Uh, whether or not this is something that I would consider to be entirely fair is a whole different question. But, uh, yeah, they, they can't hurt us because we're mirror imaged and all that. So, anyway, we're gonna get the hell out of here. Alright, so, bunch of, bunch of uh, skeletons here. We are gonna go and uh, summon ourselves a, if we can squeeze it out, a familiar. Okay. And we're going to use the familiar just to get by, because those skeletons were blocking the way. So, yeah, we used the familiar just to skip that. All right, so we're in the next area. We need to get the hell out of here as well. So we can very quickly move the hell out of here. Uh, that should be this way, I believe. Yeah, there we go. So we're just going to go through this door. There's a bunch of enemies here we don't really care about. Going through this door. And that's the exit. And, uh, oh yeah, we have a familiar still. Where is our familiar? Uh, I, don't, I don't know where my familiar is. That's a problem. Okay, yep, yeah, there you go. Familiar is dead. So now we're outside. And as much as you have traveled, these last few that right there is pretty much how that one goes. Now we're all out in the world by ourselves. Thankfully, we're still carrying around those corpses of our teammates. So we're just gonna res those. And uh, considering the sheer amount of money we have. Uh, we can just uh, do whatever we want. Hello there, guys. Welcome back. Uh, you're not kitted up right now. It's not a problem. But now we can go off into the wild world and we can go and do whatever we want in the world of Baldur's Gate 2. And if we want to, we can just finish the game by going into the palace. I'm going to wrap up this video here. If you like this particular setup, uh, feel free to give it a like. And, uh, you know, subscribing is always a cool thing as well. We're going to go finish up here. Until next time, take good care of yourselves, and as always, each other.